Welcome back to The Gallant Goblin. I'm Theo. And I'm Grady. We are not the same person. We're actually on screen together today, despite appearances. We'll start over. And we're here to give you the evening news. And today we wanted to talk to you about our first week of working on the RPG Writer Workshop. This was a new experience for us. We were introduced to the project when we went out to LA for D&D Live back in May. Um, we were there, we met a couple of people. Uh, one of the people we met was a friend, uh, became a friend of ours named Michael. And Michael wanted to introduce us to Ashley Warren, who was on one of the uh, streaming shows that he really enjoyed and uh, talked to us about the Uncaged Anthology, right? Right. That she had written. Yeah, and they were there representing the uh, DMs Guild booth. Yes, uh, it was her and a couple of other people uh, from the, what's the name of their streaming uh, show? Tales from the Mists. Tales from the Mists. And they had several of the cast members there. Mm -hmm. uh, and they had a lot of the hardcover books uh, from DMs Guild that they were printing out. Not to sell, but just to show. Um, to right, for, because some of the, the more popular ones that you start off as just being able to buy PDFs off of the site. But if it sells really well and they know there's a market for it they'll offer a printed edition softcover or hardcover, and you can get that for obviously a bit more because it's a it's an actual product, uh, but you can have it to print out and put next to your other D&D books. Yeah. And so Michael brought us in, introduced us to Ashley Warren, and he told us a little bit about, I think it was him, who told us a little bit about the, the writer workshop. Mm -hmm. And so we talked to her about that, because you have a bit of a writing background. You've done a little bit of this in the past. Uh, Aspiring writer, aspiring yes. writer, more than more than I have. The only writing I've really done is um, back in high school. I had a, a couple of creative friends. One in particular, a fellow named Matt, who runs the uh, Drabblecast, which some of you may be familiar with. If you're not, I would definitely go and look that up. Um, but we used to, we were best buddies back in high school, and we would uh, write stories where I would write a chap, I'd write a paragraph, and he would write a paragraph, mm -hmm. and we'd bounce back and forth that way. And that's about the extent of my creative writing experience. Beyond just when I started D and D and started being a DM, uh, elaborating on some of the adventures and creating character backgrounds for the players. Mm -hmm. uh, that's about it for me. But you've done a little bit more on that. You've written some stories and and things like that. Yeah, I'm I'm I'm, I'm basically in the phase of getting rejected by everyone I send things to. But at least you know I've I've tried to write some things to submit to various places. Um, so. In my head, I've gone through the writing process. More That's the first step for everybody. I don't think anybody's first step is I wrote something and was immediately published. I'm sure someone someone did, but nah, you know, I don't think so. But anyway, so we introduced Ashley Warren. She gave us her card and said that we could go and sign up on the website. Uh, a few months later, a month and a half later or so, yeah. we started getting the emails and the program started about a week ago. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, the first week has been a lot of pre-writing exercises. Yes. Yeah. So I do brainstorming as well. So the, the assumption is that you may not necessarily have an idea or know what you want to do coming into it. And so this week is also for those folks to to come up with an idea, or if you think you have one coming in, to try to kind of flesh that out and see if it's really a good fit. And even before that, it was about what tools do you need to write with, right? That first lesson was, you know, these are some word processing software options, mm -hmm. and you want to set up a kind of a schedule for yourself, right. and a place in your house or in your neighborhood or in your town where you can write and kind of be, make it a habit in your life that you work on this a little bit every day. Right. Yeah. And yeah, so that was like day one. Yeah. And so the way the workshop uh, operates, at least we're in the paid tier. We pay the twenty nine dollars to get in the paid tier, which is a little different than the free tier. Right, so the paid tier is the one that actually offers access to the lessons, kind of that that later website with the outline on the on the sidebar that we showed you in the previous video, which you can click the eye on the corner to see. Um, I think the free tier is mainly access to the Discord, Discord channel. channel and the and, and, and yeah, and maybe some of the temp or some of the downloadables maybe that they have, know. but I'm not even sure. But like, but yeah, it, it's missing a lot of the kind of professional perspective. Um, like the in-depth articles about how to use certain tools or how to to mind map mm -hmm. or 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 so forth. And there've been there's new lessons uh, not every day not but every other day so far. Just about every other day. Um yeah, some new lessons they're they're fairly lengthy. They include a little uh, exercise that you should do in the end. Um, of course, all of it's optional. You're not going to be graded. Nobody's going <laughs> to check your work to make sure you did all these. Um, but yeah, there's been lessons about mind mapping your ideas, about outlining your project, 
Uh, today's lesson was about accessibility. I don't know if you've looked at that one yet. Yeah, I, I did. And I was, I was very confused by it, but I think that was mainly just my fault. I didn't, I didn't realize what a screen reader was. I think in my head when I first saw it, I thought it was a Kindle. Like it's something that you can download and read on the screen. I mean, yeah. and that's just being stupid because accessibility obviously means uh, something that. Will well, help let's you. talk about what that right. is, right? And so, yeah. yeah, they were. So, yeah, they do kind of jump into it a little bit, assuming that you are relatively familiar with uh, disability access. And so, really, a lot of this lesson focused on access for the blind. Right. And so the screen reader being, you know, uh, when they yeah. load up an article on your computer. It will generate a, like a voice and, and read right. through the document for you. Yeah. Which a lot of us maybe don't think about. I mean, that's a, the privilege of being able-bodied is that we don't have to worry about this. But like to be able to tell uh, headers from regular paragraphs, to be able to read charts, to be able to read pictures, mm -hmm. uh, tables, a bulleted lists, a numbered lists. And how, with a little bit of forethought, when you go and create your documents, you can generate at the end something that will be easily readable by the screen readers right. for folks who are not able to read the screen. And I just want to backtrack a little bit and say that, even though I said that this one was, was kind of like you just jumped in and they assumed you were familiar with it, a lot of the other lessons are actually really good about assuming that you're relatively new to all this and, and explaining it. It's just in this case, they could have surprisingly, yeah. they, they didn't they didn't do that. Um, but the other thing is that that um, the lesson was actually it was definitely enlightening. And it's always good to make sure that you are considering the perspectives of everyone who, who approaches it, partly to be inclusive and partly because that broadens your customer base for the more practical minded. Uh, but like, I think it's actually just a good idea to do in general, this idea of, of having a simple document where you're not concerned with the layout and how fancy uh, it looks because like, I remember as a kid, like, you know, I read a novel, it had a fancy cover. It had like, if you read like Stephen King novels or something, like sometimes there's notes in the book from like characters, right? And it's in a different font and things like that. And it's formatted and it's fancy. And like, I kind of focused on that part of it as a kid. This was when I was like eight. And so like the very first thing I ever did whenever I started a story was generate word art, like in Microsoft mm. Works, if you remember back in the day, and you made it look like you can make it have like a perspective and it had color mm. and it was cool and it was really stupid. And like it just, it, it, you know, it did not look like a professional title in any way, but that's kind of what I focused on. And it really ends up being distracting because eventually I, I, a few years later, I found out that manuscripts were actually like in courier, double spaced and just boring. And this was kind of, earth shattering to me to discover. And, and but, but you know, the importance is focusing on your content, right? And the flashy stuff isn't really substantial if you really think about it. I mean, sometimes it is, right? Sometimes the layout feeds into what you're trying to convey. But I think it's really good in general just to start simple, write a simple thing, just your headers, your bodies, and that way you can really focus on, on, on the content. And one of the things they recommended was using the Ulysses software for Apple computers, which I don't think you've looked at because you don't have an Apple computer. Yeah. I've got a MacBook. <laughs> um, but Ulysses is a nice, uh, not free, a subscription-based writing software that is very simple and it uses the markdown language in order to create headers and charts. And it's a little bit of a learning curve, but once you get over that, you can create these simple documents while still, you know, while you say you need to focus on content, you do need to focus on having proper headers, having proper bulleted lists, having proper number lists, yeah. uh, and, and quote indentions. Like those are important uh, formatting features. Well, and, and if you do eventually want to convert it to another format, having those headers and everything there, yeah. It will, it will really help because you just have to convert it. And even more importantly, if you have everything marked correctly, if you want to do a massive style change at the end of it, you just go and change the template for that header, one header, two body, et cetera. And the way Ulysses works yeah. is that you just do an export. Right. You can export to PDF, you can export to a number like HTML directly. Mm -hmm. And since you have everything already marked down in there with little, like putting pound, pound in front of a header, a top header, and then pound, pound, pound in front of a secondary header. Like all that, you, know, you do that in the beginning and you have all that for when you export it to whatever format you want to. Yeah. But this is kind of the technical aspect of, of just writing. Let's talk a little bit about more the content and coming up with ideas. I know that you came in with this, uh, with at least a, a primary idea of what you wanted to do. And over the course of the week, you've mentioned that you've changed your mind about what you want to do. Many, many times. Why, uh, what spurred you to change your mind? So, 
So the so so the, like the very first thing that they sent out was something that I really took to heart, and it was saying basically, you know, as a writer, right? Do you find yourself making whatever you're working on bigger and more complicated, and and just kind of scope creeping everything until you just burn out and then give up? And I was like. Oh, you know, I, I guess I'm not unique. I'm not special in any way. This is a common problem. And their response was basically, if that's you, try to stick to the schedule more closely than, than you might be inclined to. Because I was, I'm very bad about following rules. I was kind of going to just kind of rampage through this month doing whatever I, I wanted. And, and because I guess in my head, I think I know better, even though I don't. And, and so, so, you know, this was something where really looking at a month and kind of the ideas that I want to do, I just kept adding more NPCs in particular to a lot of these adventures and, and thinking that, oh, it'll be, you know, it'll be fine. But it, it really wasn't. And, and the other thing that was really helpful, I think that the two most, two things, one with the workshop was really that, that Discord channel. Like, I have not posted anything there. I have not even introduced myself. I'm a complete lurker. But just kind of, one, having, seeing other people being able to talk about their experiences and, and everyone being very supportive is always nice and reassuring. But it also kind of, again, helps give you that perspective as to what challenges other people are facing. And then the other thing that really helped was actually going through and, and reading Uncaged because that being an anthology that was kind of put together and produced by Ashley Warren. It looks like there was a lot of people who either work with her, play with her, or were inspired by her, and or maybe even took one of the workshops in the past. And so most of those modules actually follow the recommended layout that they have here with the kind of chap three chapter, three segments of your story, kind of, you know, building action, climax, falling action. Three act story. Yeah. Right, the very, a very standard, very classical structure. Um, but they all follow that very closely. And then they're all one shot adventures designed to be a few hours. And so it's the sort of thing where it is very much writable in the scope of a month, presumably. And, and so seeing that, being able to just kind of under, you know, having something concrete to emulate in a way uh, really helped set for me what something needed to look like. Because you know, I've I've mostly been a player. I've been playing in your campaign, and because we we follow the the wizards modules, right? You you try to tell me not to look too much in these books. It's because otherwise I'll get spoiled for stuff or know too he much about monsters. He thinks we follow the adventure uh, properly. Also. He doesn't know <laughs> because I've been good and haven't been reading too much. But anyway, so so this is kind of. So I'm kind of late to the game compared to you in terms of actually understanding what D and D source books look like, what adventures look like, what the layouts are, and things like that. Um, but yeah, just seeing that kind of made me really try to reevaluate and understanding that I have that character flaw of of really never finishing anything because I want to make things epic. Um, to find ways to limit myself and actually come up with a story that I can very strictly follow the course's schedule on. Did you find that in the end? Do you feel like you settled on something? I think so. And the importance was really, really for me, finding a story where I could not add NPCs. <laughs> um, it was trying to put it in a very confined space, um, really confined mechanics, uh, so that you really dig into the few tools that you have left and make the most out of them. You know, I'm trying not to railroad people, but but just giving them a smaller sandbox to play in uh, helps helps me design as well from a mechanical standpoint. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the one of the lessons on those last a couple of days ago or today they ended with talking about that your um, adventure should be a skeleton, correct, and that you should <laughs> add just enough detail for the players and the game master to embellish, to flesh it out. I may not be following that right now. <laughs> I think that's probably gonna be an important part too for both of us, yeah. is just to set up the situations and set up who the characters are. And then the story itself really stems from what the players do and what the game master adds to it and let them play it out. Mm -hmm. And so what about you? You had come in, you had an idea before the workshop as well, but you've stuck with it. So how has, um, how has the workshop affected your thought process? Has it changed anything or, or? So I didn't have an idea of, so 
one thing that I did is that, or we, I, we sort of did together, is that uh, we decided to support Satine Phoenix's um, Patreon. And at one of the levels, you're able to have kind of uh, semi-monthly online meetings with her to discuss your whatever projects you're working on and she'll kind of help you brainstorm through it and problem solve through it mm -hmm. and so we just you know partly to support her because we're big fans and partly just you know because we thought it was a good resource for us to be able to um work on our creative storytelling ideas our DMing skills and just something that we wanted to, to try out and experience and we got to meet her when we were at DD &D live as well mm -hmm. Uh, and talked to Herbert just a little bit, and she was charming and lovely, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we decided that at, she could help me with this project. When I first met with her, I told her about the workshop, and she was really excited as well. And so I've set up uh, weekly meetings online with her for this month, and um, she's helping me go through the project myself. And she was the one who, when I first talked to her, I didn't really have an idea. Okay. And she's the one who gave me some suggestions on just kind of a place to get started when you're writing, and she recommended thinking back to even like movies or TV shows or books that really affected you and why they affected you and then take ideas off of that. And okay. so that's what I did. And I thought of a movie that has always been um, captured, one that captured my imagination from the first time I watched it, one of my favorite movies. And I spun an idea off that. And I will tell you what the movie is at another time. Um, but that's kind of how I got started. And, um, I've been brainstorming in that and working with that and talked to her today and kind of discussed um, ways to take it slowly. Like you said, she said, she said, you know, start with two NPCs because mm -hmm. the NPCs are complicated and every time you add one, it adds another thread that has to tie into everything else. Mm -hmm. And so each one is exponentially more complicated than the last. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so start with two and make sure you get all those threads in place. And only go on and add any more once you feel like you've gotten that under control. And certainly don't start with a lot. <clears throat> so um, that's one of the pieces she, she gave me today. Um, and a, a few other bits of advice. But that's kind of like, yeah, I've been kind of building off of that this week. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Hmm. It, and uh, as far as what kind of how the workshop has helped me with that, um, I, I did the, they recommend making a mood board. Yeah. Which is uh, was new new to me. I think I'd vaguely heard of it before, but a mood board is kind of finding images um, that you can that evoke the mood, the setting, the theme, mm -hmm. um, the overall tone of your adventure, and having it in front of you, near you when you're writing. So when you do find yourself in a place where you need some inspiration, you can look, and the visuals there will help you. Um, get the inspiration you need to, to push through your writing and your outlining. And I also recommended, I think, making a playlist of music, correct? <laughs> For those um, who like music. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not big in music. Um, I, don't, I don't know a ton about music. It's one of my weak spots. So I kind of didn't do the playlist thing because I wouldn't even know where to start. Um, but... I guess I could start at the soundtrack for the movie that, <laughs> that I was thinking about. I might do that, actually. Then I um, might overhear it. <clears throat> What's that? Then I might overhear it. <laughs> That's fine. He doesn't know what I'm doing either. One reason I don't want to tell Grady what I'm doing is because I want to be able to play test it with him and have him not know the adventure to see, you know, how clear is the adventure, how clear are the themes. Um, and... And I wanted him to be experienced it fresh. And I don't want him to know anything about it. Because we're in a new town. We moved into a new town in California. We don't know a lot of people here yet. And so my options for playtesting are a little bit small. Um, so we're going to go out and make new friends for this. Yeah, I mean, we have two local game stores that, that run D&D games. So I think and I think the Barnes & Noble in town does as well. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, they so, have yeah. weekly meetups. So we could probably go there. I'm sure we could find people. But we're, all, we're both relatively shy folks, <laughs> um, which is why we're talking to you through your computer screen and not coming to your house door to door to do podcasts. Or even doing chatting. There, yeah. No. Yeah. So, yeah, we're doing it here. Hi. Um, but, yeah, so the, the, uh, the mood board, I think, helped me a little bit um, getting some visual images that will help me with my descriptions. Um, and certainly the outlining was very helpful. I took the outline that uh, Ashley Warren gave us. I think it was, I don't know who wrote that particular lesson. Each lesson is written by somebody else. She writes some of them, but there's also other people. So they gave us examples of outlines and templates. Yeah. So I use that. Um, and 
uh, been plugging away at it, and yeah, so so far so good. Yeah, so it's interesting you talk about yeah, not not wanting to to share that, and uh, I don't for for me it's kind of I'm we're kind of the exact opposite on a lot of these things. Like I remember I keep tell, trying to tell you things, and you're sometimes like, don't tell me, I don't want spoilers, blah blah blah. But it's interesting because because this latest idea I've had, I've said nothing about. And I think in a, in a lot of ways, you know, especially something this short, and it can become a very intense writing period, like you really want something that you are very passionate about. And I think the story, the, 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 the last thing that I've hit on has kind of felt a lot more personal and it's something that I've been a lot more reticent to share about. And I think in a lot of ways that maybe is a sign that that's actually a better idea. So that's our, been our week with the RPG Writer Workshop. If you are trying to do this along with us, please leave some comments down below and let us know how it's going for you. We would love to hear what your uh, experience has been yourself. If you're still watching this video after however long <laughs> it's been, thank you for sticking with us. This is definitely different than what we normally do on this channel. Uh, we're trying to branch out a little bit and then put you know a little different kind of content out there. Hopefully you find this useful. Feel free to leave us feedback down below. If you do like the video, please like the video <laughs> and subscribe to our channel. That helps us um, reach more people and um, be able to continue doing this for you guys. Um, anything you want to add before we sign off? Um, just that, yeah, I think looking at these materials and how they kind of guide you through this process. It's, it's really kind of opened my eyes at that, you know, anyone can do this if they want to. Like, you shouldn't, again, we come to run this from very different backgrounds. And, and so it's really, um, there are resources out there. There are people who are gonna be very supportive of you. So if this is a dream of yours to, to tell a story and to write, like regardless of how well or not well you think you write, it's, it's something that um, with some effort and a bit of practice that you can definitely pursue and, and I think it's it can be very rewarding And with that we'll go ahead and sign off Please leave us a comment below and we will see you next time on the gallant goblin <laughs>